Hello internet, so today, I guess rather selfishly, I'm going to show you how to make your own open source API and deploy it. Why? Because I want to make my own open source API. I was looking for an API all about burgers. I wanted faux burgers. I wanted vegan burgers. I wanted veggie and halal burgers. Like literally nothing. I couldn't find anything on the internet that had a vague resemblance to this. So I was like, hey, I'm going to make my own and show you guys how to do it too. So what do we want in this burger API? Well, I want the burger name. I want an array of ingredients. I want a short description. Sure, that's quite like subjective, but it's fine. I also want the address of where I can find the burger or, you know, addresses if it's a chain. So super excited about this. Let's do it. If you did like this video or do like this video, please do like and subscribe to my channel. It really would mean a lot as I would know to keep continuing making content for you guys. So hit that button and let's do it, Burger API. Okay, so I have decided to start off on my GitHub repository page. That's so you guys can find my Burger API when I have finished. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click repositories and make a new one. So I'm gonna call this Burger API description, my burger. API. I'm going to make it public and just initialize that with a readme. So now if you want to find this project, you know where to go. Um, great. Okay. So that's where it is. I'm actually just going to grab this, uh, clone it, open up my terminal. Now in the directory of my choice. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this in personal projects because that is where I keep most of my stuff. I'm just gonna clone that repository in here. So that's cloning, great. Let's go ahead and go into it using CD, so CD Burger API, and open up so we can see. And great, we now have our project up here. You will see the readme that I initialized, so Burger API, my Burger API, and there's nothing else in here. The first thing we're actually going to do is create our database. So because we know this is burgers, I'm just going to go ahead and create a file called, I'm just going to call it DB JSON. So for database JSON. Now I've already gone ahead and pre-made my burger objects. I'm going to copy paste them here, but we'll go through it now. So. We've got our burgers here and an array of two objects at the moment. We know it's an array because we open up these two brackets right here and in it we have one object, which is quite weirdly formatted. Let's go ahead and tidy that up. I just like to make sure that everything you know is in line so it's easier to read. And here is our second object. So once again, let's tidy this one up to make sure everything's in line. And just one here. Great. So that is two burger objects. With each burger, I've got an ID. So we start from zero and then ID one. We have the name of the burger the restaurant where we can find the burger, the web address of the burger, its short description, uh, and its ingredients. So this one obviously has jackfruit, coleslaw, and a gluten-free bun. We also have addresses in an array because, you know, perhaps it's a chain, who knows? This one, Mushi's, I've only put in one address, United Kingdom. But if I wanted to add more, then I can, similar to here as well. So if I want another one, I'll simply put a comma and then just copy, paste, and then fill that out. But we don't, so I'm just going to keep it like that for now. Okay, now that we have our data of burgers, let's go ahead and get a package that will help us to create our database online. So let's get our terminals up and running again. If you've shut yours down like I have, I'm just going to go back into the project. Perfect. We are back in the project. Now I'm going to use a command called npm install JSON G for global. If you want to install it on your 
um, whole machine JSON server. And wait for that to install. Ah, I am blocked. I'm a machine, but don't worry if you also get a message like this. You just have to point out which registry you essentially want to um, download the package from. I know that I want to download this from the uh, NPM registry, so I would simply add that. Great. And that is now done for us. Okay, now let's start our JSON server by typing the following command. JSON server, so the package we literally just downloaded here, and then I'm going to write watch like this, and our database path or name, so db JSON, and hit enter. And that's it. That is it done. It was literally that easy. We've created a database just with two commands that we can now access online. So here we go. We can now see baggers. So this is why this was important. This is now a root. If we created another one, that would be another root too. But we only have one at the moment. So if you want to have more than one in this file, you just have to apply the same structure like this. So making sure uh, that the format is another object and then the name of your next database. So let's go ahead and visit that now. And ta-da! You will now see a uh, database or an API of all the burgers that we had in our file. Awesome. Now I'm going to show you something else because obviously I want to be able to use this uh, with you. I want you guys to see it too. So the next thing I want to do is actually deploy this using Heroku. Okay, so once we do this, you will be able to see this as well. At the moment, it's just on my local machine, see local host 3000. So I need to be running this in order to see it. So let's do it. Right, the first thing we need to do, we're actually going to do this from the command line tool mainly, but we need to actually go and sign up for Heroku if you haven't already. So let's do it. I already have an account, but I'll just show you what we need to do. Heroku. Let's go ahead and sign in. Obviously, if you haven't, just fill that out. I'm just going to log in because, you know, I can. Great, signing in. I'll save that. Okay, so we have now signed in. Here is your dashboard. There's no need to do anything here. Let's go over to our terminal. So we currently have this up and running. We can get burgers. I'm going to cancel this by typing Control C. So cancel that for now. One thing I am going to do is actually add the files to my uh, repository before we carry on. So I'm going to do this with git add dot git commit add burgers. Oops, git commit add burgers, just make sure to git push origin head. Okay, so we've added our burgers, we've signed up to Heroku, we can see if I refresh this that our burgers are here, awesome, nice. Okay, the next thing we need to do is actually get our project up again, get our terminal out and initialize this project because we're going to have to actually write a little bit of back end in order to serve this, uh, serve this up. So I'm going to type npm in it, just like that, and go through these. I'm just going to leave them as blank because, I mean, they're fine for, fine for now. Author, it's okay, yes. You will now see that a package JSON file has shown up. Amazing. So you will see here a lot of information. Um, we also need our package to show up. So I'm just going to go and type npm i. Install again, so JSON server. Because obviously we have it on our local computer, but if we serve this up to Kuroku, then it won't, um, it won't know that we need this package. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that again. Once again, I need to tell my computer which registry to go to. So registry npm jess and just wait for that to install. And there we go, dependency JSON server. So now we have it installed globally, but also in this project. 
Next, we need to actually write a script, okay? So this script I'm gonna do here and I'm gonna call it start. And then in the start command, I wanna just serve up this file, which I have not written yet, server.js. So this is like our mini backend now. Once again, I've already pre-made this for you, so I'm just gonna copy and paste this here. We need to get the package that we have just installed and use it in this file like this. We then create, invoke it like this, and then get the variable server so that we can then use this for middlewares and a router. We get the router. At the moment, there's just one file, which is this database JSON file. And then we have some middlewares. If you don't know much about backends, uh, maybe do some research here. But obviously, this is just a quick, simple one. So feel free to take this code if you want. And of course, we have a port. So this is going to show us uh, what port that we um, serve to. Great. That is our backend done. We need to do one more thing before moving on, and that is just add a git ignore file. This git ignore file is for us to essentially tell our project which uh, files to ignore or which folders to ignore. I'm going to tell it to ignore node modules. This means that, you know, when we push these files up to GitHub, that we will ignore the node modules because we don't want them uploading to GitHub. They're too big. Uh, they take up a lot of space. And realistically, if someone pulls down a project, they're going to want to install those uh, dependencies first anyway. And then they get their own node modules folder build up. So we want to ignore that. Ignore node modules. Cool. OK, this is looking good. So we've got this project set up. Let's go ahead and re-add this to our repository. So git add, git commit, add backend, add server. Let's put add server, git push origin head. Awesome. So now here are all our files, but no node modules, because that is thanks to our dot git ignore file. Amazing. Okay, let's go back. Let's get up our terminal. So we've already signed up to Heroku. For those of you who haven't used it before, you need to write this command. Okay, so it was essentially installing Heroku this way in order for us to be able to use it correctly from our command line tool. So this is going to take a while. I already have it, so it's just updating things for me. Okay, that is done. Already installed and up to date. Yours will take a little while longer. The next thing we need to do is actually npm install global Heroku. Once again, you probably won't need this. I just need it to tell my computer which registry to download from as I download from a few registries. Okay, once again, that will take a while, hopefully not too long. Okay, once that is done, we need to just check that that's done. I'm going to check my version. I've got Heroku 7.472. Okay, so now we're going to create a project using Heroku. I'm going to go Heroku create and then pick a project name, uh, my burger API creating and amazing. We now have my bag API at Heroku.com. Awesome. Okay, now we need just need to log in. So if you haven't already, I'm just going to make sure you are logged in because I know this can cause a few issues. So Heroku login. Okay, press any key. And just make sure you're logged in here. I'm showing you this. Uh, just in case that, you know, some of you got logged out because this is an important step. Cool. You will now see here that I am logged in as Anya Kubo. Now let's actually go ahead and create our project. So Heroku create, I'm going to call it my burger API project. It's a bit long, but sure. Why not? And that is done. We now are live on this link right here. Cool.
we still have a few more things to do. We need to actually push our project that we just made onto here. So I'm going to do that with git push Heroku main because this is what we're working in. We're working in main. And just wait for that to create itself. Okay, build has succeeded. That is good. Okay, and Heroku open. And ta da! We have done it. We've created a live site. Okay, so I can go ahead and share this with anyone. And then here we have burgers. Ta da! So I can even just go directly to this link and you will see the burgers that we have made. Amazing. So of course there's only two on there. I really want to try build this up over time. So if you do have any burgers that you have tried, which you think should definitely go on my list, then please do reach out. Please do create a pull request to my project. Um, hopefully you know how to do that. It would simply be uh, a case of cloning it and then pushing it to my branch. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you can see now how simple it is to create your own sort of JSON file that you can treat as an API to get data from for your own personal projects. So thanks so much for watching again. If you did enjoy this video, please do like and subscribe so I know to keep creating more and I'll see you again soon.